Hello everybody, Cone Dodger here, back in Automation, the car company tycoon game. Continuing on through the scenarios, today we've got the first hard one to work through, and it is the Kazakh Freedom scenario, which uh, looks like to be another one of those uh, kind of old school or 70s style cars with low quality unleaded and overall kind of a Kind of a crap wagon, one of those budget builds. Not really my strong suit, so I'm, uh, I'm really expecting some trouble on this one. So we gotta do sportiness more than five. More than five sportiness. A little bit different than our weary on. Um, let's see. $7,500 in maximum total cost. Uh, comfort more than 25, missed that one. And top speed more than 80.8. .8. Those are our limitations. Specifications, off-road, more than 70, that's one I haven't done before. Utility, more than 55. Tameness, more than 50. And economy, more than 39.2 miles per gallon. Reliability, higher than 65 as well, and that is the highest points paying total thingamajig. So we gotta worry about that one quite a bit. Let's get it started, I'm gonna go ahead and go for a ladder chassis type. It restricts us from using the real expensive materials, but you know that's not really a problem. And when I said 70s car, I actually meant 7s 1997. <laughs> it just looked like it was going to be that old, so uh, the low quality on is still a problem, but at least it's in an era I'm a little bit more familiar with. Uh, price is very low, so I'm probably going to stick with the regular steel. I think I want to go for... Let's see, it's easier to get tameness with rear-wheel drive, I think. Um, doesn't really affect, or doesn't seem to affect the the uh, off-road ability at all, but if we go with front transverse, we get more cabin space, which would mean more utility, so that's something to consider. Uh, so let me go for front-wheel drive to start with. As far as this goes, struts have the best off-road, and the rear, I'm not sure, let's look. A uh, single axle coil has very high off-road, but uh, probably really crappy tameness. Yeah, very low. Leaf, very low. Anything else have good off-road? Multi-link does, average, but that's going to be too expensive. So I think that single axle coil is what I'm going to go with, because it has the, uh, the very high off-road and still very low tameness, but so does this one. As much as I would like to go with all-wheel drive, don't think I can afford that. And panel material of steel. Boop. This is the body we have to choose from. It is the only body, and this old body will have a safety penalty, but apparently safety regulations do not exist, so we don't even have to worry about it. Oh, and while I'm designing the body here, uh, this is the new version of uh, automation. Build 1418 includes a bunch of new fixtures, and the scrolly tab will show you just that, that there is a ton of new options to choose from, including a lot of detailed ones. So, uh, you know, you get a lot of options for the one grill, so that's very nice to see. There's also three new bodies, but we won't see them here. Uh, hopefully in later scenarios we will, though. Alright, styling-wise, that's all I'm gonna do. Nice utilitarian-looking car. Moving on for an engine. So, as far as the engine goes, we need to have pretty good economy and reliability. Those are our two main concerns. 80 miles per hour should be easy to accomplish with, say, I'd say about 100 horsepower would be the, the range I'm aiming for. So I'm going to go with inline 4, and I'm going to go with a cast iron block, because there's not really any, not really any kind of uh, repercussions to having a lot of weight. Uh, it affects our tameness a little bit, but more front weight in a front-wheel drive car is probably going to make it even more tame, to be honest with you. So that's what I'm going with. Something about 1800cc should be more than enough. Uh, so let's actually go down a little bit. Let's actually see if we can get 100 horsepower out of, say, a 1.5 liter. And we will make it short-stroked. Cast, cast, cast. Cheap, cheap, cheap. I'm going to go for overhead cam, three valves per cylinder, and that's kind of my staple as far as the uh, the cheapy engines go. It seems to be a great combination. Around 9.0 to 1. Hey, we got that 
low quality unleaded fuel to do with. Let's go 8.5. And I'll give it a little cam profile to try and save that. Save that octane rating that is. Red. Red for racy. Because it's a racy car. Uh, no. Uh, no. Definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. Injection. We can get multi point. That is nice. That is a good thing to use uh, to spend that little extra money we have on, I believe. Standard intake. Low quality unleaded. 76 octane. That is terrible. That is awful. <laughs> I've never built an engine on this fuel, as far as I know. Ugh. That's, that's bad. Um, we'll try and give it a, a pretty decent amount of richness. It would really, be really nice to be able to throw some compression at this thing, but I don't think it's going to happen. Even that was probably a little optimistic. Good quality on the fuel system, though. Four. Next. Uh, I don't know what just happened there, but next, let's say we'll go for a short cast setup. 146, that should be plenty. Emissions is not an issue, and comfort's not an issue. Oh, well, it's a little bit of an issue, so I'll put a a single reverse flow on there. Ah, size. Size is a concern. I didn't notice that before. I believe this body is probably a little bit more set up for a rear-wheel drive transverse, or sorry, longitudinal style engine instead of the transverse. Let's see if this will fit at all, though. Ah, we were very close. So I will just square it up a bit. And we still get that 1.5 liters. So let's do a first test and see how close I am to that 100 horsepower. You hear that? Yep, yep, that's the sound of knock. <laughs> Not good. Uh, 81, so even further down I the compression. How depressing. Alright, let's try it again. Uh, those are some awful, awful power numbers. I'm probably gonna say it's still knocking. Let's just skip it, because, yeah. Yep, still knocking. How about 7.5? I got, I got uh, weed eaters that make more compression than this thing. Staggering 67 horsepower. 100 may have been a, a little bit optimistic with this fuel. Oh, and it's still knocking. Unbelievable. Let me get it a little bit of cam profile, and I'll try and richen it up a hair. Let's see if it doesn't doesn't start running rich. Uh, still knocking. 76.5. Go even higher. It's gonna start running rich here soon, though. Get lower net, uh, lower net old compression, though. Okay, hooray, it's not knocking anymore. 74.9, and we had how much to choose? Oh, we had 76 to choose from. Or use, I mean. So let us go a little bit up on that. Okay, so now we're nice and close. And 86.5, 86.6. I think that's a good starting point, so let's just roll with that. Uh, let me throw it in test mode and make sure nothing's going wonky. Well, this thing should be darn reliable, because nothing's even remotely having an issue. So yeah, it should be a nice, reliable engine. I'm gonna go for a manual gearbox, single standard, and four speeds should be plenty. Uh, top speed is 107, so we'll be more than more than okay with that 80 miles per hour. We may actually lose some power down the line uh, to gain some points. Sportiness is a concern. I don't think I can space it enough. Eh, maybe I can. We'll try and... We'll try and do... Hmm, I'm thinking... See, it's good to have second gear hit 60 miles an hour for sportiness, but sportiness more than 5, that should be a piece of cake. I'm not even going to worry about it. So back down. Uh, so third gear will be 60 miles an hour, and I'll adjust this as needed. Hard tires, and 
I don't think I really even need to change them. Uh, 185s, 185, 185. That's a little bit backwards. Uh, can I change that at all? I can make the rears bigger. Okay, yeah, let me match them up. Let's do a no stagger setup. Have two quality to use there. Remember that later. I might uh, back off on that to save some money. Go for real comfortable brakes. Comfortable, 25. Starting to get a hang of how to build these kind of average cars, uh, non-sports cars, but still a lot to learn. Okay, moving on to the arrow. How about, how about a semi-clad under tray to get some fuel economy. We'll give it more cooling than necessary to help our reliability. Other than that, everything's going to be staying the same. What gives us more utility? More seats? Does that give us a utility bump? I mean, it doesn't cost anything, so let's do it. Five seats. Uh, standard interior will give us the comfort, I think. Okay, it does cost something to have more seats. Uh, it costs a good bit of weight, so I will mess with that later and see and see uh, if that affects any of our points. I'd like to have at least power steering and ABS. I would like to. <clears throat> no safety. You didn't, you didn't hear that. No, no safety at all. Okay, suspension. How about comfort? And I'll probably need to adjust this as well to get our tameness. So let's start up and see our points. Uh, we're not hitting comfort. Not hitting off-road ability. Not hitting tameness. And not hitting economy. Oh, they weren't kidding when they said this was a hard challenge. Okay, the first thing I want to look at is the off-road ability because I don't really know where to find that. There it is. Our current is 37.6 and we needed what? That's not encouraging. We need more than 70? What? <laughs> um, I is a confused. Okay, let's go to suspension. Let's try off-road. Give it max ride height and see what that does. Uh, it hurts tameness, hurts sportiness, but we don't really care about that. Uh, let's go to detailed stats. Off road is now at 38. 38. Well, I'm gonna have to really think about this. What else could it be? So one thing I'm thinking of is maybe the tires. These are pretty low profile on there now, 45. Uh, let's try and change the rims down to 13s and give it nice beefy tires, which is going to kill the tameness and the sportiness. Uh, but we'll, we'll have to kind of see what the effect of it is. Uh, it helped our economy a little bit, so that's something. Uh, tameness actually went up, as did comfort. Uh, now I want to go to detail stats. Uh, we're up to 40. We still got a long way to go, though. Yeah, plenty of utility, though. If we go back to uh, that. Yeah, utility more than 55. We're, we're well clearing that. Well, let's go back to platform and see... Was there anything in here that maybe I, I missed? Alrighty, so I'm thinking $7,500 in maximum total costs, and we've only spent 6100 and our production units aren't terribly high either. So how about going with an all-wheel drive setup? That would give us a lot of off-road, would it not? It'll probably help the tameness as well. Let's see. Uh, tameness. Yeah, that cured our tameness issues. Did not cure our off-road ability. 58. Still got quite a ways to go. Um... Hmm. More thinking to do. Alright, so I'm starting to try and think like an off-roader. And uh, one thing an off-road car or truck or something like that would want is more gears with shorter spacing. So you would want gears that are, that are you know, real low range that you could kind of crawl along in. So let's see if that would help. Uh, we'll give it really... Really short spacing in the first gears there, so let's see. 
detailed stats. Uh, a small increase. I got us up to 59.84. That is still not quite 70, though. Okay, well, there is one thing that I said I wanted to look at. I don't think it's related to anything, but I said I wanted to try the four seats versus five and see what that affected. Um, oh, I got super excited there. I thought that magically made everything better, but it did not. We... We have gotten through the limitations, but have not quite met the specifications. Uh, so our score would be 1,013, but we've still got to make it better in the off-road and economy. I haven't even worried about economy yet, because I can't get the thing to even get close to the 70-something points that is needed for, um, yeah, 70 points for off-road. <sighs> still a lot of thinking to do. You ever have one of those moments where you just feel really, really, really stupid? No? Well, I do. And I'm having one right now. Because I've been looking around, it's, it's clicking everything. I have changed the engine in this thing. I've changed the platform. Uh, we're now on a monocoque chassis. I went longitudinal setup. We now have a one liter engine. Nothing would get that good old utility, or sorry, off-road, above like 61-ish. How much you want to bet going with chunky off-road tires is probably going to get us there. Well, would y'all imagine that? 73. Oh, brother. So what did that mess up? I'm sure, I'm sure that had a negative effect on many things. Uh, not really. We're still okay on everything, but I gotta get the economy better, which is really suffering as well. Uh, 30 miles per gallon, and I gotta hit uh, 39.2. Well, I guess now that that hurdle's out of the way, and I feel like an idiot, I'll go through here and figure out how to squeeze some miles per gallon out of it. <sighs> I'm not smart. Okay, so I've made some big changes to the engine here, trying to get us some economy. Went for low friction cast pistons, uh, even smaller. Uh, actually, I think I settled back down to that one liter range. Uh, go for going for an all aluminum setup, block and head, dual overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. Went for a VVT on the intake cams, trying to get squeak a little bit of economy out of it. Uh, also up the quality on a lot of these because I had some excess money. And overall, just doing every little bit of fuel-saving trickery I could think of. And that has gotten my economy up to a 23.28%. That's up from 18%, so hopefully we're making some headway. I have made some headway already, up to 37.8. But let's see what this recent change has done. Got it! There's bronze, okay. Uh, at 1,081 points. Let's see where... We could stand to gain some points, though. Um, so reliability is the biggest points pair. And cost is not a factor, so I'm going to go ahead and try and spend the remaining money I have on making it even more reliable. Another thing I need to look at is something I haven't looked at yet, and that is the handling. So let's look at the yaw rate. Uh, oh, we're actually really good. We're, uh, we're fairly tame. We could be a little bit more so on the tameness factor, so let's see if we can help that out. It looked like it was actually handling pretty neutral, so how about we up the, let me think, let's up the front sway bar stiffness a little and just a little bit on the spring. I don't want to go up too crazy because it's going to ruin our off-road ability. Uh, that did give us a little bit more tameness and didn't hurt anything else, so that's a good place to look. Alrighty, I've finally done it. It took a whole lot of very strange things, but the thing that finally pushed me over the edge was getting the economy to be super high. Uh, and another strange thing I did was getting the off-road ability to be higher. It is now at 76.42. Uh, not the highest I've gotten it, but that is uh, the current number. And that was through going with the corrosive resistant steel body and panel material, or material for the chassis and the panel material. Uh, that's one I didn't really think of, and I guess that is because of the 
environmental resistance. You know, if you're going off-road, it needs to be able to with withstand the environment and the elements and all that kind of stuff. So I suppose it makes sense. And as far as the engine goes, I just kept upping the quality on the fuel system, which would in turn let me lean it out even more. You can see we settled in at 14.4 to 1. So super, super efficient engine. 25%, 25.72 economy very very good especially for uh, the, the amount of technology I had available that was that was definitely uh, living up to the title of being a hard challenge because uh, let's see total time spent 51 minutes that's that's about um, pretty close to uh, the longest these have taken me but there we go that's the conclusion of this scenario next one we move along to is the gentleman's agreement which has us building a new sports car. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.